Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now we are in a new week and I'm expecting God to do wonderful things in our lives this week. Now I don't know where you are watching or listening to me. Listen, God loves you. He's planned the best things for you. Trust me. Jesus said, fear not little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So God has good intentions for you. And you must connect with those intentions of God with the same heart and faith that God is thinking them towards you. See, John tells us something. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, We've got fellowship going for us, praise God. So don't just let God to have good intentions for you. You must align yourself, especially your mind, with the same way God is thinking towards you. Now that's why we've been talking about this topic we've been talking about this whole month. We actually began last month, praise God. Hey, but before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Let's make this demand with faith in our hearts, with the right mindset. Join me now and say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. So we've been talking about the wisdom of God's word, how to receive the wisdom of God's word. And you know, our text is actually from 1 Peter chapter 3. Let's, let's turn there. 1 Peter chapter 3. Sorry, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, from verse 1 to verse 3. It says, Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. It says, not some. Laying aside all, get rid of all these things from your heart. Why am I hitting on this? Because this is what prevents you from seeing right, from hearing right, and from understanding right. If you've got one iota of malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, which all culminates into evil speaking, if you've got just this little, I tell you the truth, it will affect the way you understand the personality of God. It will affect the way you perceive the wisdom of God. Because these things are very dangerous. They affect your sight. They affect your hearing. So they will affect your understanding. So because you see with your eyes, you hear with your ears. But then the real processing center is your heart. Whatever you look at, makes no sense until it gets into your heart. Whatever you hear makes no sense until you get, you know, have you, have you been there, you know, you're talking to someone and the, the person is telling you something and like, okay, 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 okay. Oh, I've heard you, I've heard you, I've heard you. And then later on, you're not thinking of what the person is saying. Like, hold on, hold on. This person was actually telling me what? Now what happened? As at the time the person was speaking, you were listening, but you were not processing. So your heart was not in that which you were listening to. But later on, you are now beginning to call that conversation up in your heart to dissect it. And that's when it began to make meaning to you. So it's the same thing if you don't hear right. If you don't see right, if you don't understand right, it's going to affect your understanding of God's wisdom. It will. And if the moment that has been affected, then you are going to be making decisions based on a faulty or wrong 
um, standing point or foundation. And you know what that means? You're not going to build what God intends for you to build. Now, that's why I keep hitting on this. Get rid of all these things from your heart. So when you look at God's word, you begin to see the intention of his mind. And that's what his, his wisdom is. Everything God has spoken. Now, I know sometimes, you know, as preachers also, sometimes we, we make that mistake of trying to say what someone else has said. We do that a lot as preachers. But you see, one thing you must learn is every child of God have access to the Holy Spirit. And, and you are supposed to be shining from that fellowship that you enjoy with the Holy Spirit. So I hear pastors who say, don't preach your experience. Preach, preach the word of God. Now that's, that's one of the, that's one of the, you know, some things we say without thinking about what we say. It's important you think about what you say before you say them. Now, it's just one thing you picked from somewhere, but you never thought about it. So when someone says, don't preach your experience, preach the word of God. So what is the word of God? The word of God is the experience of others. Oh, yes. Praise God. You read about Abraham. You're reading about the experience that Abraham had with God. And he wrote his experience with God, or rather, the experience Abraham had with God was documented. And we read it and say, wow, Abraham was a great man of God. So, you today, what are you? You are the reader of Abraham's experience. Oh, and uh, uh, the reader of Abraham's experience is a great man of God. Is that possible? What is your own experience with God? So when they say, don't preach your experience, now they are twisting the truth. They are twisting the intention. The Bible is not the closure of God's word. That's, that's what we must know. The book of Revelation didn't end God's word. God is still speaking till this day. And, and truly speaking, his word is still coming to us today. So if we don't have experiences, and if we're not bold enough to share our experiences, guess what we are doing? We are destroying the next generation. Because I'll tell you the truth, the reason we are still believing the word till this day is because we, we see in the lives of some, some of those people that brought down you know, handed down these things to us. We see certain fruits. Now, when I mean fruit, we see certain things in their lives that show that these things that we read is true. Now, if they hid their experiences from us and we just know, oh, they were preachers. We knew they were preachers. We don't know what they preach. We don't know the encounters they had. How then do we believe? Your experience matters a lot. So don't listen to people who say, don't preach your experience, just preach the word. No, sir. Tell us how you have related with the word. Let's know and see if the word is still alive. If it's, a, if it's alive in you, then I believe it's alive or it can be alive in me too. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, this is why it's so easy for people to come up and say, the days of miracles are over. Why? Because they didn't hear the experiences of others who have received or experienced miracles. So they feel in their mind, we are just supposed to tell about the miracles of those days in the Bible. So we read, what we read there, we are happy with ourselves. That's why a lot of people are unbelievers. Because what we preach, we seem to just preach a rule this thing is not about a rule this is about a life it's a life we receive life from you what do you receive life for do you receive life to read you receive life to live so when you begin to live and your life is reflecting the things that are said in this book guess what you're saying everything in this book is real 
That's your experience. So you don't come and say, oh, the Bible say, heal the sick. But then you don't heal the sick today. What about that sick person? And you know, you know, um, see, because you start giving all manner of excuses. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. We have, we have a group of preachers who are actually beginning, well not beginning, they're actually getting deep into preaching their unbelief. Be careful when a preacher is preaching from the place of unbelief. Be careful when a preacher is preaching from the place of um, uh, 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 he's not experienced something. So he he's feeling no other person can experience that thing. Now that's wrong. I, I, I read about, no, I heard him say this. I, I, I listened to the message at Bishop Benson Idahosa. Uh, he's gone to church and then his pastor then was preaching to them he had just given his life to jesus christ and then the pastor was preaching from the bible and then he says jesus giving the command heal the sick cast out devil cleanse the lepers raise the dead he heard that for the first time and said sorry sir he went to his pastor and said did you read that Jesus said we should raise the dead? As in, we are commanded to raise the dead. The pastor said, yes, he did. So Jesus said, he said, yes, he did. Then he turned to his pastor and said, Pastor, have you raised the dead? The pastor said, no. But Jesus said, we should. So Jesus said, we should, yes. So I can raise the dead. The pastor said, yes. Imagine if the pastor had told him, no, you know, that was in those days, you see, these days, the world have become something else. You know, what manner of excuse one can give? But the pastor, even though he has not done it before, encouraged him and said, Jesus said we should do it. And, and, and that bishop then, as a young man, left the house early in the morning, going from street to street, looking for a place where people are gathered. When he finds one, his question is, did anybody die here? <laughs> Praise God. He took that instruction literally because someone did not stop him. Be careful when, when even as preachers, be careful the kind of things you say. Don't say, don't preach your experience. Now, the fact that you're trying to correct something doesn't mean you, you, you cancel everything. Just like people call, you know, came up and say, oh, you know, uh, you see how unbelief works. See, first they come up and say, don't tight. Tithing is of the Old Testament. Okay. And while they are that, the next thing they come up and they begin to say, there's no such thing as financial blessing. If you want to prosper, go and walk. Okay. Then they go further. I say, God does not bless people i had a preacher say jesus only came to save your soul he didn't come to tamper with your your physical work and and things like that and i, I i'm like lord before our eyes we are we are seeing broad day current sadducees sadducees you see, Sadducees were the people who never believed in the supernatural. They never believed in, in the dead being raised. How? You're dead, you're dead. That's a Sadducee. They, they are more of, they are more of um, physical um, people. They are more of mental intellectuals. So don't come fool us here. That, those are the Sadducees. And, and we have them today. So it goes from one step to the other. So first they say, don't die it. The next they don't expect any blessing from God. Now, of course, see the progression of their thoughts. As long as you don't die, of course, you won't expect any blessing from God. Why do we tithe? We tithe because we are confessing that we believe in a God that you don't see. So when you see me, and, and I've told you this thing on this broadcast before, God is wise. And when he gives a command, he's not just giving command for the present day. He's giving a command for generations to come. So he commanded his children to tithe. 
when we tithe, we are saying that we believe it's a physical act. You know, the Bible says faith without works is dead. So I believe in God who blesses and who prospers. Okay. So because I believe so, I do something physical, which is my works. So someone who doesn't know what's in my heart sees me package something and, and he's following me and then we we'll go, oh, let's go. So sorry, why did you give that to that person? Oh, I was instructed by God to give it to the person. How will God instruct you? Oh, don't worry. You see, that's my tithe. So I got blessed and I took out 10% from it as God commanded. And while I was praying, God ministered to me that I should give it to that person. So that's exactly what I just did. Now, what are you saying to that person? You're saying to that person that there is a God you don't see who speaks to me. And when he speaks to me, I obey him. Now, here's how this works. The other fellow was just there and, and, and God spoke to you and you responded to God and that fellow gets blessed. So this other person is watching this whole thing take place and he sees and he hears the testimony of that one, you know, probably person. Do you know this was exactly what I prayed to God for yesterday? And here is it, it has come. What signal are you sending to that person? God is real. God is real. Praise God. Yes. Now me that is doing that because I believe in God. Who can give me an instruction? Same way I believe he can command men from different places to do me one kind of favor or the other. You see? So if I, if I don't believe in God, why should I expect anything from him? So when someone starts telling you, cancel any physical thing you do for God, what are they trying to tell you? Don't believe in God anymore. That's exactly what they are saying. It's a progression. They are going from one step to the other, to the other. One day, they will come and tell you, there is no Jesus. There is nothing like Jesus. All these things written in the Bible are all fallacies. They will, because they themselves don't understand that they have been deceived. Let me put it in the right light. The serpent has beaten them. They don't know. They think they are being intellectual. They think they are trying to solve because they sit down and say, can you imagine? Uh, some pastors are just eating uh, people's tithes and, and imagine a pastor will just sit down as everybody come and tithe to me and people go and tithe to the next day he, he carries all the money and goes shopping and things like that now they see that instead of them going before the lord and say lord if you gave instructions concerning this is this what you expect to see they rather say ah this tithe thing it must be wrong no it's not wrong you met a wrong fellow you met a wrong fellow and sit and use that to deceive you. What about those that have bore witness of the testimonies of God concerning Titan? You don't want to hear that. You, you, you just saw one fellow and then that sums it up. No, something is wrong with your heart. Something is wrong with your heart. You may just be envious and bitter i'm telling you the truth it is just possible you feel bad that you don't have that kind of liberty now whether it's right or wrong that's not not what we're dealing with today when i'm talking what i'm talking about right or wrong, when a preacher does that when a preacher misuse or in, in your sight misuse things like that he has got to answer to but you know sometimes even you as one who feels you're righteous, most likely you're walking into self-righteousness now. And you feel, I can't do that. I, I don't have that kind of liberty. So instead of going to God, you now begin to castigate what is righteous and right. The moment you open that door, Satan takes advantage of you. I'm telling you the truth. He takes advantage of you. He begins to nourish your heart with all kinds of ideas, uh, using scriptures also. I'm telling you the truth.
so it's easy to come up with this new dichotomy oh the old testament and the new testament in the new testament we are not supposed to tithe uh, show me one place where they pay tithe in the new testament i always tell people this i said uh, i pay tithe and i live in the new testament so am i not an example no no show me in the bible okay how did i learn to pay tithe see now that's what people don't think people don't think did a jew come from israel to teach nigerians for example oh look you have to obey the command of the lord he commanded us to tithe there are people who heard god concerning things like that and that's why it's still in existence today. and no matter how you try to fight it it will still exist why because you're not bigger than the holy spirit you are not thank you lord jesus i pray you submit your heart to the lord to understand his wisdom and take out all these wrong things as peter instructed from your heart praise god thank you holy spirit father let your word bear fruit in every heart listening in the name of the lord jesus amen god bless you i'll see you tomorrow bye